irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to What Women Want with Judy Goss, only on LA Talk Radio. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. Welcome, welcome to What Women Want Talk Radio for our show tonight, Motivation Beyond Monday. I'm your host, Judy Goss. Hello, along with my co-host, actress and producer, Kristen West. We are looking to find that motivation all week long, not just on Monday. As the famous hashtag says, hashtag Motivation Monday, I see that all over social media all the time on Monday. So stay with us for our captivating guests who will come on the show in just a few minutes to reveal their their secrets to staying motivated beyond Monday. I know that's always hard for me, so I can't wait to hear what they have to say about it. What Women Want is coming up on three years. Oh my gosh, three years this month. Happy birthday to us. It's so amazing. And we thank all of you for listening. And for getting us to over 700,000 downloads so far, we so enjoy every show and hope you do also. And if you want to listen to past shows, go to LA Talk Radio's website archives at latalkradio.com or subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You'll hear some of our celebrity guests who have been with us, like former O.J. Simpson prosecutor Marsha Clark, five-time Olympian Jackie Edwards, uh, The author from Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, Dr. Christine Carlson, I should say co-author, famous actresses, TV hosts, entrepreneurs, all kinds of women who are so inspiring and unique in their very own ways. You are listening to What Women Want here on LA Talk Radio for our show tonight, Motivation Beyond Monday. I am certainly looking forward to hearing from business coach and author Lawana Harris, as well as TV personality Jill Simonian, who we are welcoming back to the show to see how her book is coming along. I looked it up on Amazon. It looks like it's doing really well. We'll be with her in a few minutes as well. Our sponsor tonight goes so well with what our show is about. Allison Pena is the founder of badwidow.com. Now, Allison shows women who are caregivers or bereaved how to navigate loss and handle unimaginable challenges powerfully and peacefully with time-tested, actionable insights, self-care practices, and strategies. Email allison at badwidow.com. That's allison with one L or call 718-612-9963 to talk about hiring her for personalized one-on-one support or as a speaker. She's been through it, unfortunately, but fortunately, she's teaching others now so she knows what you're going through and can help you navigate the way. So go visit badwidow.com to find out more. A little bit about me, I'm Judy Goss, and besides this awesome radio show, I am a TV host, a regular contributor on NBC and Fox, an entrepreneur. I founded the nationally claimed What Women Want networking group five years ago, and that now has 20 chapters around the country. I'm a St. Martin's Press author and freelance writer for New York Lifestyles magazine. And most importantly, I'm the mama of twin girls who are almost 13 years old. Wow, two female teenagers in the house along with me. (laughs) Quite a ride. What Women Want Networking, by the way, my company, is having our first national women's conference. I'm so excited. It's called Spirit of Women in Atlanta, October 7th through 8th. And we have our first VIP sponsor, the founder of womenforone.com, Kelly McNellis. She's got millions of subscribers from over 60 countries around the world. And she will be running a workshop as well during the conference called Discover Your Messy Truth. And we will have more info about soon about it soon, how you can get tickets and all that. It's going to be an epic event for women, a lifestyle networking conference. We also have award-winning TV reporter, Dr. Robbie Ludwig, as a keynote speaker at the conference. So again, if you're interested in more info, email whatwomenwatchshow at gmail.com. And in the meantime, just save the date, October 7th through 8th, the Spirit of Women Conference in Atlanta. Can't wait to see you there. And my co-host, Kristen West, she is with me this evening and every Wednesday. She's so amazing. She's an award-winning actress and producer and is going to be becoming an award-winning sound engineer as well. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, she's the winner of a Best Actress Award for the film Seeking Valentina. She was um, nominated for Best Actress and the Mary Austin Award for Female Producers and won the Indie Spirit Award this year at the Idlewild International Film Festival. Wow, Kristen, hello. Hi. 
I'm working on those sound engineering skills, Judy. We're getting up to snuff here day by day. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And it's also Mercury in retrograde, I'm told. So it, like, you know, all kinds of stuff can happen, right? <laughs> you should have just seen my face fell, fall right then when you mentioned that. <laughs> no wonder things are going awry. <laughs> <laughs> to everybody who's listening, we were just having some technical issues in the beginning of the show, and I just, I, I think it's great. You're, you're rocking and rolling right through them and just staying calm as ever when I'm sitting there going, start the show, come on. <laughs> so I appreciate your patience with that. Okay, so today we're speaking with business and life coach Luana Harris. Her industry experience includes people and leadership development, training and facilitation, diversity and inclusion, people, leadership, and project management. In addition, Luana is an author, stroke awareness advocate, and a missionary to Haiti. Welcome to the show, Luana. Glad to be here. I'm so glad you got on. (laughs) We're happy to have you. So um, as I was looking through your backgrounds and all the amazing things that you do, the experience you've had and also who you are today, you know, I didn't know where to start, honestly. Um, I had so many questions. But let's start with your background first. Where are you from? And, you know, let's let's have the basics. Sure. So I am from North Carolina, born and raised. Spent a couple years up in Massachusetts and realized that snow is not for me. We had 91 <laughs> inches of snow the first winter that we were there back in 2014, so I am definitely a Carolina girl, and uh, so my husband and I, high school sweethearts, married here in North Carolina, and I'm currently working uh, with global leadership development uh, with leaders all across the world, helping them to have folks that want to follow them as opposed to, you know, pressing the the position. So having lots of fun developing managers and leaders all around the world. And then as far as the books, I have an adorable two-year-old grandson, and he inspired a book series as well as I went through uh, an an unfortunate uh, situation with my daughter, which inspired one of the most recent titles that I have that gives the account of her having a stroke at 17. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, lots going on. It changed our, our entire family forever. You just never know. I guess that must have been awful. That's so young. I did. I, I didn't Absolutely. actually even know that was. Is that rare? It, it is, and you know, I have to tell you, your response was our response. She's only seventeen, so when she actually had a headache and wasn't feeling well, no one. Absolutely no one was thinking stroke, and it turns out that's what it was. And, you know, thank God she did survive, and she has had a 100% recovery. However, it has also fueled a passion for advocacy so that we are spreading the word that, yes, young people do have strokes, and it's not as uncommon as you would think it is. In fact, it's increasing in the youth and in adolescents according to the National Stroke Association. Is it really? Now, you said she's 100% better. That's thank God for that. Um, I'm so happy to hear that. Now, talk about motivation beyond Monday. This is motivation beyond, you know, your outer self. I mean, you really had to step outside yourself there to probably get yourself together. Tell me about that and how you kind of got back to reality and and kept moving along. I mean, you wrote a book, which is fantastic. Um, But before that, when it when it was all that was happening, I think one of the one of the biggest things for me and probably listeners people that are listening out there is is how when that when it first starts to happen you know how do you get yourself back together absolutely and you know i have a, a six key principles that i try to apply on a pretty consistent basis to have that motivation as you said not only beyond monday but also just throughout life in general and the first is to start each day with gratitude we all have something even though some days you know if it's a little busy or a little hectic we may have to look deep but we all have something to be grateful for So I try to keep those things top of mind and each day just select one thing that I'm going to focus on throughout the day that I'm grateful for. And how about just waking up, you know, I just like, 
what I've started to do, and I, I've made a habit of it, that I haven't done pretty much all my life, and I, I'm kind of surprised that I haven't because I am basically a grateful person, but now I've trained myself to wake up and realize that my eyelids are open and just say thank you for that. I mean, it just starts there, right? It starts right there. I'm alive, I woke up, and I'm going into this day. Don't know what it holds. But I, throughout the day, I'm going to be grateful that I'm here to see this day. So starting the day with gratitude is the first principle that I apply relative to staying motivated. And what's the second? And, and the second is, you know, I make some time to disconnect. I make some time to completely unplug from social media, from, you know, the phone, from all types of, you know, stimulus that's hitting with information overload. You know, sometimes it feels like we're drinking from a fire hose with a rapid pace of life these days. So oh, I'm, that's I'm such really a big one. It's, yes, it's really, and you really have to, and I think Kristen's going to agree here now, now also. She's, you know, a celebrity actress and producer, and she's constantly all over social media. I mean, as soon as I post, she's liking, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, Kristen, how do you find, how do you kind kind of separate that world from, you know, really turning off. I've really had to work at it because I'm kind of in the social media generation. So it was part of my early adult experience and teenage experience to be plugged in all the time. And our brains are not programmed and not evolved really to to accommodate all that information constantly. So I have to that has to be a really strong component of my personal self-care to not, you know, have my phone be my extra appendage, as it were. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and what's the so third key, Lawana? Yes, yeah, so we're starting the day with gratitude. We're disconnecting so that we can regenerate and have the energy we need as well as decompress. And then the third thing is, is to have Rack Wednesdays. And this is just something personal for me. And Rack Wednesdays are R-A-K for random acts of kindness. So we've all hit that wall sometimes on Wednesdays as we're trying to keep that motivation throughout the week. So I, I try to find a way to intentionally find someone that I can be kind to, to be purposeful, to do something nice for someone, take them out to lunch, to um, do something in the community. So just try to find a way to really apply my generosity to someone without any expectation of anything in return. Just a random act of kindness. That Motivation is- beyond Monday. This is such great stuff. I love it. That is so beautiful. Luana, I, I wanted to ask you because I was exploring your site and trying to learn more about you and what you're about. One of the things that really touched me was that you have a quote on your website, maybe a catchphrase or a tag phrase, a life fueled by love. And I think that's so incredibly strong. What 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 do you love? What fuels you in those moments where where things are not going the way we would hope? You know, being able to give of myself to show love to others, whether it be through missions. Um, if you saw the site, I go down to Haiti once a year to serve the children at the orphanages and schools there. We have a big literacy campaign there. Or even here, domestically, working in some under-resourced communities, just showing love. And quite honestly, nothing really fancy or complicated. Uh, Most people we see, we may not know it, but the smile that we give them or the kind word that we share, it may be the only one they have all day. And you never know who you may inspire to, you know, be motivated based on what they're going through. That's amazing, and I, I think those small acts of kindness and, and, and human human touch are so missed, in, you know, in day-to-day life. We can just so very easily miss them, gloss over them. And and I also wanted to ask you, you're, you do so much. You're, you're an author, a coach, as Judy said. What do you find? You're also an energy management coach, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Well, how do we manage our energy better, Luana? I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, you, and, you know, it, it really goes back to the fundamental under, understanding that energy is neither created or, destro- or destroyed, right? 
So when we think about that, the first piece is to understand your energy. Where do you draw energy from? What is it that makes you come alive? What is it that really inspires you and, and really amps you up? And as you identify those things, then you find ways to sprinkle those throughout your day, your week, your life, and really add that to you, to, you know, your way of of going about and being. And then also equally important is to know what drains your energy, what really makes you feel drained, what makes you feel less energetic, and what makes you feel like, oh, demotivated even. And then identifying those things and how you can manage that. Now, you may, be, may not be able to take those things completely out of your life, but you can definitely identify those triggers and then find ways to work around it when you know that you may have to be in those types of situations or engaged in things that may drain your energy. That makes sense. So, so okay, so we have your six keys. We have gratitude, disconnect, random acts of kindness. What's number four? Number four is staying active. Just move your body. And for for some that can go out and do the 20, 26.2, I'm more like a 13.1, uh, and that's walking. However, you know, it doesn't have to be a big, you know, monumental uh, feat. It could just be dancing. I love to put on my favorite song, and for three and a half minutes, just give it all I've got. And it may not be that great to look at, but it really gets me juiced. So staying active and really finding a way sometimes to even get out in nature and take a walk, whatever it is that, as I said, feeds your energy, but staying active would be uh, the next one. That makes sense. And it also gives your brain oxygen and gives you time to think about those random acts of kindness that you can, you know, that you're able to do on Wednesdays and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it all fans out from there. So tell us the other two. Yeah, it does. And, and, you know, it also releases those endorphins, happy hormones, right? Mm, there you then, go. So, exactly. And we all need those. And then number five is to make quality time a priority. So we, we know we talk about balance. But I have to say I, I don't necessarily align to balance as the goal. I think more about harmony. So sometimes you're going to be really busy and you may not be able to dedicate the time that you want to different areas of your life. But what you can do is give your best self to whatever you're doing. So while you may have different times where you can slow down or you really have to, you know, have some crunch time for some projects you're working on, but where, whatever you're doing, make quality time a priority for where you are and bring your best self and show up with all that you have in the moment as opposed to uh, trying to achieve balance across everything, because I don't know about you, but um, I've tried that for a long time, and I'm not really sure it's attainable. So I, I've decided to change the goal to harmony as opposed to balance. And yeah, that's good. Time, we actually was on a panel where we had a whole discussion about that whole balance thing, that it just doesn't exist. So <laughs> just keep spinning the plates and do the best you can, right? I agree. It, exactly. And I've been chasing that balanced carrot forever. So you know what? I think I'm, I'm changing my focus to harmony there. And then finally, the last one is uh, just really staying connected to your why. Why is it that you do what you do? Why do you guys do this show? Why is it that, you know, we go out, whether it's our profession, whether it's our hobbies, our passion, the many things and hats that we wear as women, the many irons that we have in the fire, why do we do it? And when we sit down and we really are connected with why we do what we do, then that helps us to stay motivated even when the what that we're doing may not be exactly what we would want at the time. Hmm. Yeah, that's excellent. Especially uh, like something uh, like this show. I've been doing it three years. It's every Wednesday night. You know, it's a lot to write it, produce it, get the guests, you know, prepare for the interviews because I, I never want to go on the show not prepared and, and neither does Kristen. And... I feel like people tell me the why, you know, comes from that energy, that excitement. If, if you know that what you're doing is right and it's and it's really syncing with who you are, then you get that excitement. And, and you know, as tired as I am sometimes, um, you know, because mostly I'm on New York time, it's, you know, kind of late for me and I've got kids and everything else. I get that that excitement when it like about a half an hour before the show is supposed to go on. And it's just it's something that I really, really love. So I think that that's really important, the why, when, when you can really dig in there and make sure that you're really happy with what you're doing. 
Absolutely. And, and I even keep it in front of me. So I have pictures of my family and I actually have a, you know, vision board. Many of us do a vision board that, you know, gives a visual depiction of our lives. So I have photos of my, of my family, of my grandson and my phone. And when I'm trying to stay motivated, since we're talking about motivation beyond Monday, sometimes when things are a little tough, I just flip through my phone and I look at those smiling faces and those cute little chubby cheeks on my grandson and it's like, yeah, I can do this because I know why I'm doing this as opposed to, oh, another spreadsheet, please, no more. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, that's true. And we only have about two more minutes left, but I'd like to know just a little bit about your book. You are still good. Um, I'm sure, is it a self-help book Um, and just advice from, you know, the things that you've been through, what you've learned and that type of thing? Yes, the, the book, You Are Still Good, is the uh, account of my daughter when she has a stroke. It walks you through the fact that we were just, you know, going about our day, and then out of the blue, um, my 17-year-old daughter could have been gone. And it walks you through my my lens of that experience as a mother. And then it also just gives some keys and some tips for anyone who unfortunately finds themselves in a similar situation where they're facing or have faced the loss of a child or sudden tragedy. And um, it, again, because she did recover 100% and she's doing well, it is very inspirational, but then it also gives some tangible tips on how to walk through some of those dark times um, when there's really nothing that can prepare you for that. And I think a lot of us need that because at some point or another, you know, we go through a tragedy or or something that kind of uproots us and we need to figure out, you know, how we can deal with it. So uh, that's definitely a book that people need. So God bless your daughter. That's really amazing. I'm I'm so happy to hear that. When you first said it, I was like, oh, no, I don't know whether to ask if she's okay or not. So that's just that's, you know, that's really amazing. So you are still good. It's sold on Amazon. Right? Yes. They can find it anywhere Amazon, Barnes and Noble, any of the online outlets, and in bookstores. And tell us what your website is and where people can find out more information or, or contact you. Sure. My website is lawanaharris.com, L A W A N A Harris.com, and you'll find not only the information about the book about my daughter, some children's series that I've wrote about my grandson as well. And um, just a lot of the things that we're doing in Haiti. So please take a look and I'd be happy to connect. Well, that is wonderful. Good for you. And and I appreciate you doing that in Haiti because, you know, we, some of us, I feel like I need to do more and and you're inspiring me to really think about it as well. So that's just on top of everything else that you're doing, leadership development and author and and coaching and everything else. um, That's truly amazing. So good for you. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much, and happy motivation to everyone out there who's listening. Take care. Thank you. Yeah, motivation Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Kristen, our next guest. Oh, yes. Motivate. Get motivated and introduce her. Yes, yes, yes. We have the amazing Jill Simonian, who is the author of the newly released The Fab Mom's Guide, a motivating, resilience-building guide for the first-time moms out there. Jill is also the parenting lifestyle contributor for CBS Los Angeles News with her segments airing every Wednesday at 5 p.m. and Friday mornings at 6.45 a.m. And her personal blog is out there as well. Do read it. Welcome to the show, Jill. Hi, ladies. Welcome back. Congratulations. (laughs) Congratulations on that new book, Jill. How is it going? Thank you. I think it's going well. I think it's going well. I'm sort of in this little haze. It it, um, it launched, let me think, April 4th, so a few weeks ago. And it was so busy. I mean, you, you know how this whole book thing goes. It's like you work for months and months and months to promote the book and then it launches and then you're hustling and getting the word out and doing all this stuff. And then right now, a few weeks later, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. And I was listening to the previous conversation with LaWanda and I was sitting there thinking, what is my why again? What is my why? I'm sorry. (laughs) 
You're helping me get motivated. <laughs> well, let's talk yeah, that's, about why. That's our third baby. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and you should see me, Jill. I'm like nodding my my head. My chin is like dipping because this is it's similar to releasing a movie with a book. You work on it and you work on it and you work on it and then you release it and it's like, whoa, we're done sort of, but not. But, but you're not, but you're not done at all because then you want people to read it or to see it and you want people to keep talking about it because it really was something that I'm so happy I did. But the follow-up to what I always tell people, they always say, oh, congratulations, this is great. How's it going? And I go, it's going great. And then I add, but I had no idea how much of a muscle of a work that it would be and how much, I, I had no idea. No idea at all, but it's been quite an experience, really a learning experience. Well, I recommend that everybody read what you have written because I was perusing your blog just to get reacquainted. Obviously, we had spoken on the show about a month ago, and I'm going to tell you something about your writing style. You have a writing style that is infectiously fun and it's just like a an instant pick me up no amount of coffee could have picked me up the way reading your blog <laughs> with its humor and candor picked me up today so i want to thank you for that and, and tell people what your what your blog website is so that they can and thank you thank you so much i appreciate you saying that i um i try to write like in the exact same way that i talk so that's i you i, I really appreciate you saying that my blog is thefabmom.com. You got to make sure that you put a the in front of it. So it's thefabmom.com. And it's funny because one of the recent posts on there is called the book that broke my bounce. And I (laughs) talk about this. I mean, it's like, it's sort of like a double entendre. So you got to go and read it and, you know, but, uh, but the irony is that the whole book itself and the blog is based around motivation for moms to stay confident, to stay forward moving. If you have a setback, make sure you fell forward. That's the whole book. And that is the whole blog. And, and, And the book is specifically for like the first year of first time motherhood. But in the last few weeks, I have found myself struggling with motivation because it's like you're coming off of this huge project and you just think, oh, my gosh, I'm so tired. Like that. You is, know? That, is that what inspired you to write it, that you had maybe the a postpartum blues and then you needed to immerse yourself in something or what what hatched this, this you know amazing what? book? That's a good question. I did not I did not have postpartum blues. I did, however, have it was not you know, clinically diagnosed or anything like that. I mean, there is something, there is prenatal depression, like depression through pregnancy does exist. I was never diagnosed with that, but I do tell people, I think I genuinely had the first time around, I think I had some sort of pregnancy, anxiety. I I, I don't know if I should say depression, but I had a pregnancy, anxiety, and uncertainty, and fear. I had major fear. And so, uh, but the the irony was that once my baby, once I delivered my baby, my baby was born, I sort of chucked all of it out the window and buckled down and said, okay, I'm going to figure this out. And it was sort of became a challenge for me to figure out and get past that fear of becoming a mother for the first time. So that's what, what sort of motivated the book. And it was my intent back then to really stay motivated through new motherhood because I had seen so many of my friends and peers and you know different women I work with I really saw how a lot of people lost themselves and all of a sudden they morphed into this different person and and I didn't want to change into this different person I wanted to become a better person and a more fulfilled person and a person who knows how to problem solve better because now you're you know, raising a baby and all this stuff. So that's what fueled wanting to write. That's what fueled creating the blog and then most recently writing the book. Okay, so you did this before you thought you were going to change into another person or did you start changing your identity and you thought, oh my gosh, I got to get out of this. You know, how can I help myself? No, 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 no. I started blogging and writing and sort of repositioning my career to shift from entertainment news into like motherhood and lifestyle. I did, I, I like did it to get ahead of it so that it wouldn't happen. Got it. <laughs> Is that crazy? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, makes total sense. I, I think I lost myself in, with having two babies at one time because <laughs> I have twins. Yeah, I, can't, no, um, I cannot imagine that. And that's one thing I say in the book. I said, I cannot speak 
to caring and raising twins. That is a whole other ball game. Yeah. It's just crazy. I don't remember anything that happened the first six months. I mean, it just not. It was just like it's like a black hole down. It's so my memory. Yeah. From how that. could it not be? Yeah. yeah. And, and even in the past, like when a year and a half went by, I still can't remember much. But you know, the first six months, forget it. So, yeah, I. I I think I lost myself for a while. I became a little too serious and a little too, you know, kind of freakishly worried and, and all that type of thing. Um, and it took a lot to get out of that. I, I didn't feel like myself for a long time. Um, and mm-hmm. then I started climbing up out of it after the girls were a little bit older. But that's that's great that you caught it ahead of time. Well, I, I guess I, yeah, I, I guess it was <laughs> fueled by that whole uh, urgency of, okay, I, I have to do something to get ahead of this to prevent this from happening. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really big on like, oh, let's prevent this. Let's prevent, let's not do anything risky so that we don't get into an accident. Like I'm, I'm a little bit of a chicken, so maybe that has nothing to do with it, but yeah. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, you're talking ahead, about, Kristen. you're interested. It's so interesting. You're talking about fears and, and how those fears, you know, can, can cause us to behave in certain ways. And I think when you have such a giant shoe to fill in motherhood, you, you have ways that you think you're supposed to behave versus how I'm not supposed to behave. And you, you have negotiated all of that so beautifully for yourself. What do you believe is the biggest focus drain after you've had a child? Because you talk about those focus drains in your blog. What's, what's, the, what's the big one? Mm-hmm. I think the big one is reconciling all of the, let me think how to say this, reconciling what you think you should be doing and what you actually end up doing. And I mean, you can like slice that a million different ways. Everything from you know, it's like we were all raised with our moms doing things certain ways. And now the climate of motherhood is so different because I think there's just so many more demands, whether you're a working mother or you're a stay at home mom. I think there's everything across the board, even from like taking my kids to school. There's no, everything is so complicated and so requires so much more of our time. Like my like when I was a little kid, my mom would send us down the street to the bus stop and we'd get on the bus and then the bus would deliver us home after school and that was the end of the story and no big deal. Now it's like I there's no bus where my kids go to school. Um, everyone has to drop off their kid and everyone's working and if you have to have your kids stay after school, it's a process where you have to email the person. You know what I mean? Like there's all these like variables and, and, and complications where it's like I'm trying to reconcile, okay, like what is going to work for me? Because the way that things worked for my mom and the way that I saw things worked, that is not, uh, that's no longer an option for me. So it's like, it's like the focus drain is always trying to figure out what's going to work for you. And it's funny because even like in all these conversations, like doing all the book press and everything, whenever I talk about motherhood, um, you know, it's always great conversations because everyone has their own story and, you know, problem solving that they, you know, got to figure out and everything. But there's always a few people that I get comments from on social media. And I don't know if they're just being mean, but I happen to think they're being truthful. They're like, listen, a million people that have had babies before you, motherhood's no big deal. And I, the first thing I do is I say, you know what? I agree. It isn't a big deal. But the problem is, is that the, our generation of mothers now, we were raised with this whole thing of when you grow up, you can be this, 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 all these career aspirations. And then, so we grow up thinking about all these career aspirations and we start accomplishing the goals and we start checking off our little lists like, oh my gosh, okay, now I'm going to do this, do this, do this. And then when we become moms, it's like, okay, how to navigate this. That's where the complication is. You see, does, am I making sense at all? Do you see? Yes, you are, because absolutely. Yeah, because that's there the is focus no monolithic. Where you're like, oh my god. Yeah, there's no monolithic motherhood anymore. There's not what. There's no essential. There are very few essential components of motherhood. Every every woman is doing it in her own unique way, and mm-hmm. I think that's what you're speaking to. And I I want to ask you because. How do you balance and structure your time and energy with all these concerns? Being a a reporter on and a public figure and having 
two beautiful children and being an author and keeping up the blog and 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 talking to Russell Brand. How do you how do you yeah, structure your so time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do I keep up with it? Um, I well, the thing is. Let me think. This is the motivation show. It's very, I, I don't know. I think the best way to keep up with it is just to do and not to think too much. Yeah. Uh, and you also, <laughs> I'll agree I'm with that. Ma- I can't, th- I cannot think about things. Like I make my list of urgent, like this is what, this is the truth of it. The things that get done are the urgent, urgent matters that there is no getting around each day like today Wednesdays for instance Wednesdays I I do my appearances on CBS LA and and that's like okay I had and then you know earlier today I had all these things that I had to do like you know different interviews and and outreach for book promotion and you know setting up certain things so it's like I had this list of urgent to do's and that's all if and then I have a whole other list of like things I also have to get done by the end of the week so the only thing you can do is just to do the urgent to do's like, you know, things that are really important, like who's going to watch my kids. And, you know, it's like <laughs> the things that are, you have to just do and you can't think about it too much and you can't second guess like, oh, is this the right choice? And you just have to do. And if things don't really turn out like as best as you thought they would, you can't uh, you can't focus on that you just gotta say okay well you know what that segment didn't go over well tonight well i did the best i could on to the next whatever (laughs) like that's the only way to do it you really have to be i hate to say happy with mediocrity a lot of the times but you really have to be content with saying you know what i did it maybe it didn't turn out so hot this time but whatever i'll get another shot I, yeah, and prioritize, it sounds like you're talking about too. Prioritize the things that yeah. mean the most to you at that time. And if they don't work out, they're not going to always work out perfect. And it's true. No, I, nothing's going to work out perfect. It, it's not, I, mean, I shouldn't say nothing. I don't want to be doom and gloom. But no, it's just, <laughs> This is Motivation yeah, Wednesday. So motivation motivation no, Wednesday. Motivation. <laughs> motivation Wednesday. That's right. No, you can't, you cannot, you have to just like, I call it bouncing through the things that might be a semi disappointing to you if if you know or I hate to say disappointing but bouncing through the things that maybe didn't turn out as well as you thought how do you do that um you just make yourself <laughs> <laughs> there you go your mom you don't give yourself <laughs> you don't give yourself an option i don't know and there, i mean i don't want to seem like you know inhuman here because there's certain things that like I do if something doesn't work out or if something doesn't turn out the way I thought it was or if I I will it sounds I like you're talking there, about am, having a positive mindset I mean you have a very positive yeah. mindset you keep moving forward you take the next step you do something a little bit wrong or not maybe the way you thought about it but you keep moving forward I think that's the point yeah. here right is take that next yeah. step just keep going you just have to keep going you just keep going but yeah that's it that's totally it you know, I have two criteria. One is, is it going to kill somebody or not? <laughs> yes, exactly. That's my first one. That's my first one. The second one is there's an infinitesimal number of shades of gray. Not everything is going to be perfect and and white light and beautiful and peace, love and all that. Not everything is going to mm-hmm. be absolutely horrible and, and terrible. And there's an infinite number of variations in between. I, You know, I love this idea of bouncing through the fails. And I love how candid you are about that. How how has your and and you were talking about that you're you sometimes have people online saying well who are you to talk about this what do you think yeah. <laughs> what do you think is a fail that actually for you ended up being a blessing in disguise mm, getting fired from a show about oh gosh I think it was like three years ago. I was working. I won't say which one. You can like go and like. Ooh, puzzle, let's go Google. Google it together if you want to. Like, you, this is what women was, want: forensic very, investigation. There are no yeah, secrets yeah, yeah. all these days. No secrets. <laughs> You're insta- I know you can go. I'll say I was working for a show from 2013 to 2014, and you can go and like peek around and see what show I was working for. And um, 
it just for whatever reason, I mean, Judy, I'm sure you can relate to this too, you know, working in television or news or anything, you know, some jobs really work and some jobs you start and you're just like, something is not vibing here. And that was the, I had worked for, I mean, several years before that. And this was the first job that I started working at that wasn't vibing and I couldn't figure out what was wrong because I had never had that happen before. I'm always the happy employee, the one who's easy to work with, you know, everything, oh my gosh, she'll get it done. And something was not working. And after about six months, I just sort of got, I was nicely fired. I mean, it wasn't anything terrible, but I was, it, it, I was broken up about it. And I really thought, gosh, what I screwed up, what a fail to get, it was a, you know, it was a good situation. It was, but I, I found the job I thought was a good situation, I would say, but it didn't work out. And for the following year, it was really hard for me to swallow and accept that. And I finally realized, you know what? That was for the absolute best. Because at the time my girls were two and three years old and I, in hindsight, look back and I think, wow, how lucky was that, that that job did not work out because A, it gave me more time to spend at home during those precious times and B, it opened up, it sort of like set the fire for me to start a project of my own, which essentially led to writing the book. Had I not gotten fired from that job, I never, I don't want to say I never would have written a book, but let's just say I would not have had the time to even entertain pursuing writing a book. So it turned out to be a really good thing. Well, we're so pleased that you bounced back from that fail because you've, you have so much wisdom in such a, a funny way. Is there a, a process, you know, obviously we've talked about making priorities. Is there a... Mm-hmm. When you when you wake up in the morning, is there something special you do, or are you just the bright ray of sunshine that that I feel you are? No, all the time? I am not a bright ray of sunshine at all. You can ask my husband; he'll probably be like, "What are you kidding? No way!" We'll Susan, get him to call in. No. I, <laughs> are you I, one of those people you know, that that aren't morning people? Are you? Because I'm not a morning person. I and, cannot. No, I am. That's not why a I force myself person. to wake up and say thank you the first thing because I wake and up and I, I'm a dragon. Yeah. Yes, and that's how I am too. I heard, Judy, I heard you say that at the top of the show, and that is exactly what I do too. And I started doing it in the last year. And it's helped me a lot. It's set my day off so much better. And, and, you know, something else I do too, which I actually hate doing, and I also talk about this in the book, is I've started making my bed more. Because... If you make your bed, and I did, this is one of my to dos for like ber- first time moms in the hazy new, in the hazy months of brand new motherhood. I say, if you can manage to fix your bed every day or close to every day, you're going to feel accomplished no matter what kind of a junk day that you have. And so I'm I've obsessive started, about that. And there was a whole yeah. article, I think it was in yeah. Time Magazine or New York Times. I can't remember where it was. Mm-hmm. A whole article about how much more productive people are than the ones who yes. make their beds. Yes, yes, yes. In the beginning of the day, not the end of the day. (laughs) Yes, I know. Well, in the... Yes. In my book, I say that it's okay if you make it at 5 p.m. because with a newborn, you get all sorts of like, you know, get out of jail free cards. But no, yeah, it's but not at the okay. beginning of the day, I have started. <laughs> no, it's not. And I'm obsessive about that. And I can't. Yeah, and, and my my husband, I don't think was too much, but there's something that you just can't get away with me in the house with your bed unmade. It's just, I'm crazy about it. But it doesn't it set the day off right. And no matter what kind of a day you've had, to that fixed bed makes you feel better at the end of the day. Well, yeah, when I come in at the end of the day, I don't want to look at my bed. If I come in at five, six, seven, even eight, nine o'clock and think I just want to get into it, you know, before I have dinner and get my PJs yeah. on and, and everything else. <laughs> I mean, it's not something, you know, I want to do. And a lot of times I work from home, too. So I don't want to walk by my bedroom and think, oh, God, I would love to be in exactly. that bed right now. I so know. It's a whole I mindset know. thing. It really is. You know, making the bed gets us, gets us making the bed gets us one step closer to looking like like. Um, you know those those house design magazines. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like when your house is like, my house Maybe really my is house beautiful. Not my house, that's for sure. Yeah, it is house beautiful. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, you so know, my house could be a chaotic wreck, and if my bed is made, then I feel good. <laughs> yeah, it's true. 
No, it's it's totally true, and I I I try to make my bed. I'm not as religious about it as other people. <laughs> yeah, I did hear you go a little quiet there, Kristen, while we were talking about it. <laughs> I feel guilty, and my mom's <laughs> listening. Um, <laughs> so, Jill, you know, we talked about the Fab Mom, and we and you are the Fab Mom. You're the epitome of the Fab Mom. What's the key component <laughs> of, of the Fab Mom? What what is the secret of the Fab Mom? Yeah. Okay, so this the secret is that so fab stands for focused after babies. So I think I told you guys that. I think we talked about this before. Um yeah, it, it's the every day and it's I mean it really it aligns with the whole fab mom thing is not about dressing this way or putting on makeup or wearing heels. I mean, I like all of that stuff, but that's not what's going to keep you happy from the inside out. I'm a big believer. Like you have to be focused to be doing things that you enjoy to be doing things that you believe like you have a purpose for, whether it's like working or volunteering or giving back or even just, you know, like running your own family and, and doing, you know, things for your kids and or with your spouse. And, and that's what the whole fab thing is about it's sort of to to break things down and say okay let's get to like the grounded reality of what is going to keep me content with my life and so for me I think I figured out a balance of working working like part-time being at home part-time being able to enjoy certain things part-time although the last few months have been like crazy busy and I've been pretty much working full-time but but that's that's the essence of being fab is figuring out the formula for your own life. That's going to keep you feeling, I think, what did Luanda say in harmony? That's what it's about. Well, the fab mom's guide is coming out. It's actually, it's already out. Excuse me. Where, yeah, that, where, yeah. <laughs> where do we buy it? Yeah. I secretly so looked at it, our numbers on Amazon is doing really well. Did you? Yeah. Did? Okay, I keep checking it all week. Are you? I'm trying to. Fi- I am trying to figure out how to use that whole numbers thing on Amazon, and I can't. I don't know if I'm looking at the right thing or the wrong thing or what. But oh, it's doing like, really well. Yeah, I used to check those numbers shot. like the stock market when I, my book came out. I was checking those numbers every day, and then when they go down really far, you take a screenshot of it. Come on, girl. Yeah, that's doing really well. And you have your website, okay, right? Thanks. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and then my website is thefabmom.com, and I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Jill Simone at my name. And check out our feed. We've tagged in Jill to several of our tweets. Mine, I know Judy has. I know uh, the radio show has. So connect with Jill for some really energetic blogs. It's better than a cup of coffee, folks. Jill, thank you so much for coming on. We always love talking to you because you are that bright ray ray of sunshine that makes her bed. And so (laughs) we're, we're thrilled to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's, it's always so much fun with you guys. Well, we are thrilled. Next week, we're going to have former Today Show anchor Jenna Wolf on the show. She's going to talk about what it was like to be a news anchor on one of the most popular shows in the world. And she will be revealing why and how she quit and all about what she's doing now. It's all here on LA Talk Radio or go to whatwomenwantradio.com for more information. Thank you so much for listening, everybody, and have a great night. You're listening to What Women Want with Judy Goss, only on L.A. Talk Radio.